One, two, three. Now these two batteries here look about the same, right? But while they both can provide portable energy for your laptop, vacuum cleaner or for example cordless power tool, their inner composition is totally different. You see this one is made up of lithium and this one is made up of sodium. And yes, this is very exciting because while lithium is a scarce resource that is also quite pricey, sodium is not rare and thus also a lot cheaper. I mean normal table salts aka sodium chloride is made up of around 40% sodium. And for months now I've seen videos on YouTube talking about that such salt batteries aka sodium ion ones will be the future of battery technology. But no one actually tested a real one yet. So I was very excited to find these cells for sale on AliExpress. And I know what you're thinking, but no, they are not fake. And in this video I will show you exactly why I think they're real and more importantly do a bunch of tests in order to ultimately tell you whether you should from now on only use the salt batteries instead of common lithium ion ones. Let's get started! Today's video is sponsored by JLC PCB, my longtime choice for fast and reliable PCB services. And just recently, they launched their highly anticipated multicolor silkscreen PCBs. By using them, you can, for example, add your own picture to a colorful PCB with the help of ProEasy EDA, which is JLC PCB's more professional EDA edition with more powerful features and functions. And after the design process, you can, like always, order your PCBs, which will not only be of high quality but also very affordable. So join their Facebook group today for an exclusive multicolor coupon and be among the first to try out this new feature. Now first off, when looking at these two batteries, there is obviously no way to tell whether this one is really sodium based. One possible way to find that out though is of course cutting it open and looking inside. But because I tried the exact same thing in a previous video and had no idea what I was looking at because I'm not a chemist, we should probably instead focus on an electrical method. One of them is called charge slash discharge curve, meaning we charge and discharge the battery while monitoring its voltage and flowing current. So let's do just that, starting with the lithium battery by firstly adding taps to its plus and minus pole and then checking its data sheet to find out how it wants to get treated. And it seems like its standard charge is 1.25 amps up to a voltage of 4.2 volts. And for the discharge we can do a maximum of 20 amps down to 2.5 volts. But I wanted to keep it low and thus settled for 2.5 amps. With that in mind, I set up my battery tester, hooked up the battery, adjusted the current and voltage values in the software and began with the charging process, which after around 2 hours gave me this curve. So next it was discharge curve time, which after around 1 hour looked like this and if we put them side by side then we can see very typical lithium based curves which not only apply to such lithium ion cells, but also LiPo ones and big lithium iron phosphate ones. So next let's compare it to the supposedly sodium ion batteries, for which I also hooked one up to the battery tester and set a charging voltage and current to 4 volts and 1.3 amps, just like the datasheet recommends it. And its discharge current to 2.6 amps down to this time 1.8 volts. And after once again waiting for a few hours, I was greeted with these curves here, which without a doubt 
look quite a bit different than the lithium ion ones and do correspond with sodium ion curves you can find in scientific reports. Which is enough proof for me. But which curve is now better, you might ask? Well, the main big difference is that the lithium battery comes with a narrower voltage plateau, where the battery spits out its energy, which is around 4 volts to 3.4 volts. The sodium one, on the other hand, has a wider one, between 3.9 volts and around 2.1 volts. This has the advantage that you can more easily determine how much charge is left in your battery, while lithium based ones often have to keep track of how much current goes in and out of the battery to determine its state of charge. But then again, when you got a load that needs a constant power, then it is definitely easier to work with a more stable voltage because then the current also stays around the same. With a more decreasing voltage though, the current has to constantly rise to get the same output power. And thus, your power electronics have to be designed this way, which can be a bit more expensive. So yeah, both curves have their pros and cons. But what is a definite disadvantage is that while both batteries come with the same size, the sodium one can only deliver around 4.06 watt hours of energy, while the lithium one can do 8.7 watt hours, which is more than double. Of course, when digging a bit online, you can find sodium cells with slightly higher capacity, but certainly not as high as lithium based batteries at the same size. And that directly brings me to the energy density comparison, for which I check the volume, weight and price of one sodium ion cell and added those information to my battery comparison charts. And as you can see, sodium ion can only barely rival lithium iron phosphate when it comes to energy density, while being quite a bit more expensive. But I bet that will soon change due to the low price of the material. And it is currently probably only so high because it is a new technology that is not quite in mass production yet. And speaking of new technology, there also do not exist dedicated charging ICs for sodium ion batteries yet. Which are definitely mandatory though because of the different charging voltage. But the good news is that with an ordinary LM317 adjustable voltage regulator, you can pretty easily build up a crude constant voltage constant current charger according to the schematic given by the datasheet. With this resistor value, we should get a maximum of 1.3 amps. And with this resistor voltage divider, an output voltage of 4 volts which according to my tests was all pretty close and thus suitable for my sodium ion battery. And if you want to put multiple cells in series in order to form a powerful battery pack, then you also need a battery management system, aka BMS, to keep each individual cell safe from overcharge and over discharge, which now also needs to work with other voltage levels. But thankfully, there already appears to exist a commercial version. So yeah, new technology obviously comes with some challenges. But for now, let's switch back to our raw cells here. And the very important question, how fast we can charge them up and discharge them. Now when looking at the datasheets, then we can easily figure out that the max values are quite a bit bigger for the lithium based battery. To prove this, I powered up my new battery tester, which can measure the internal DC resistance of a battery, by basically comparing how much its voltage drops when more and more current flows. After doing this test with both batteries, you can see that the sodium one features a 33% higher internal resistance, meaning that due to its chemical structure, it produces more heat when more current flows that obviously limits its input and output power capabilities. But while that sounds bad, 
those values are still very close to those of lithium iron phosphate batteries. And you know, those get used as energy storages for houses and also in electric cars. But while this chemistry doesn't allow for maximum power, it certainly improves the safety aspects. I mean, when looking up lithium ion videos on YouTube, then there are plenty where fire and explosions are involved. Including my own one from almost 10 years ago. But when browsing through the sodium ion datasheet, then you can always read that no fire or explosion took place. Which, I know, would definitely be interesting to test on my own. But honestly speaking, I was a bit too scared to do that. So instead, I recommend you to watch this video. Which, summarized, ended with the cells flying around, but not creating an explosion or fire. And last but not least, we got the topic of cycle life. Meaning, how often I can discharge and charge up the battery before it is losing capacity. And according to the datasheet, the sodium battery does 1000 cycles while maintaining 85% of its capacity. While the lithium battery only comes with 60% after 250 cycles. Which is a huge difference. And with that being said, I think we discovered the most important advantages and disadvantages when it comes to this new battery technology. So do I think we should now all replace all of our lithium ion batteries? Well, definitely not. Because I feel like sodium ion is electrically more similar to lithium iron phosphates. And I hope to see it sooner or later become its replacement. So that we can finally have a more environmental friendly battery. So time to play the waiting game. But while doing that, feel free to check out some of my other videos or my Patreon in order to keep the show going. As always, don't forget to like, share, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Stay creative and I will see you next time.